Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sage Romy. I am the intern at the Jazz Center of Bellingham and I'm also a jazz musician and a soon-to-be graduate in ethnomusicology from Western Washington University. And today I want to talk a little bit about improvisation, a little bit more broadly than some of the other videos that um, you might have seen with Music Monday. You know, you had Kevin Woods talking about reacting and interacting with yourself in improvisation and Thomas Harris talking about um, using extensions in improvisation, but what is what is this improvisation and and why do we use it in music? And then I'm gonna give a couple more techniques for practicing improvisation that are not as technical as other things you might say. They're, they're not using the structures, they're more thinking about how we think about improvisation and, and practicing how to listen in those contexts. So we're gonna start off with what is improvisation? It's actually something that we do every single day. You know, you wake up in the morning and you have a plan that you're gonna eat breakfast, but what's that breakfast gonna be? Maybe you have something in mind and you don't have eggs and flour, so you can't make your pancakes. Then you have to improvise something else. Maybe you replace the ingredients or maybe you get takeout or maybe, you know, you do something else. Another example is when you're communicating with somebody, maybe you're having a conversation and somebody brings something up that's shocking to you and then you have to react to that and they react to you reacting. That's communication and that's exactly what improvisation is. It's, it's reacting to the moment and, and seeing the moment and seeing how you fit in and then changing what you're doing. And that happens all the time in music. Chances are you've actually been improvising since the first time you sang a song. Maybe you heard a nursery rhyme and, you know, you couldn't read music at the age of two, but you could kind of hum along and figure it out and maybe make something up. Maybe you didn't know the words and so you made up your own words. That's a form of improvisation. Or maybe you've been drumming for a couple years, but, you know, you're not really sure of a lot of tunes and you're just jamming with some friends and they call something that you don't know and you say, no, that's fine. I'm going to listen and I'm going to hear it out. And, and it's really cool because maybe you heard a fill and you put it in just the right place or you got a break because somebody looked at you and you could understand what was going on. That's improvisation too. Pretty much all music around the world has some form of improvisation in it. Um, and there's different kind of levels of improvisation that you can have in music and different ways of thinking about it. But I'm going to highlight a couple. So there's things that are fully improvised. Um, sometimes we'll call that free music in, in a jazz setting, free jazz. Um, and that's something where you, the artists and the musicians who are a part of that are actually actively trying not to play um, from memory. So there's not songs, there's not necessarily um, written notated music like you might think of written notated music and it's gonna change sometimes just dramatically change from performance to performance um, for example you know we will have people like Anthony Braxton who are doing free improvisation Pauline Oliveris Cecil Taylor um, and a lot of that actually comes out of uh, more standard jazz um, and, and you see a lot of that happening with jazz musicians or people who have jazz training. And then we have partially improv improvised music, and that's something that you'll see a lot at like a, a jazz jam session, um, or you'll see just in recordings, they'll play through the head or the, the melody of the music, and then somebody will improvise over the chord changes of that. So there's still, you know, a little bit of, of structure that's going on, but there's also, that, that improvisation that's happening. Um, for example, in other places in the world, in, in West Africa, there's there's drumming that will happen and there's that's also partially improvised. You know, there's these very, very complex polyrhythms that are happening and they fit together very, very exactly. So it's not, it's not a free-for-all by any means, but there's little ways that the, the person who's in charge, the drum master, can change things a little bit. And maybe a groove is just really hidden with people and so they take that groove a little bit longer. Maybe people aren't quite 
in the energy level that the drummers want so they kind of amp it up a level to get people dancing or to stop people from talking and so that that shaping of that moment and and kind of timing of how long a groove goes on that's also improvisation um, you also have in Hindustani music in in Indian classical music um, improvisation will where they'll start with the the raga which is kind of the scale that shapes that improvisation and then they'll do um, kind of ornamentation and they'll change and interpret the raga in different ways and that's improvised and then you have things that have limited improvisation in, in varying degrees um, specifically maybe in Western classical music they oftentimes will have the all of the notes written out but there's still little areas and little nuances that can change from performance to performance. You know, that's why we have different performances of things is because they'll change even though the notes are the same. Um, you know, for example, one of my favorite Bach pieces is the Goldberg Variations, um, played by Glenn Gould specifically, and there's a couple different recordings of that that vary drastically because he's kind of changing what he's saying or how how the notes are being interpreted and and some of that comes from the moment and from himself and from just so many different things and that is improvisation so why do we improvise then music at its core is about communicating and improvisation is a way of communicating so music is an interactive art form you know i come to the bandstand and I'm, I'm ready to say something, we're ready to share some emotions. And I share that with the musicians that I'm playing with and I'll also share that with the audience members. But it's not just a one-way street from the musicians to the audience. The audience is also bringing in, um, you know, their energies and their emotions and, and their dance moves. And that's something that the musicians have to respond to. So, you know, maybe somebody comes in and they're having a bad day and, and the musicians are, are kind of picking up on that energy and they play really just moving ballad and that really gets somebody. somebody. And you can feel that communication happening. Maybe somebody starts to cry or, or maybe somebody's having a bad day or somebody's having a really good day and they start to play a, a, a dance music and, and people start to dance and then the musicians uh, will start, you know, the, the audience members will start dancing rather. Musicians can dance too. And, and all of these things are affecting the scene. The musicians speaking with each other and kind of seeing what, what's going on musically. And then the audience members coming in. Improvisation helps us bridge that gap of communication between everybody involved and, and shaping that moment. So in jazz, there's a lot of improvisation, and part of that comes from the fact that jazz is uh, a West African music. It's, it's something that at its core is an African music, and that has ties to improvisation, and that's, that's a part of it. Another part of it is that um, jazz is, is historically used as a dance music, and still to this day is used as a dance music. And while the big bands were playing, you know, people would be dancing and they would be into it, but if you just play the head through maybe once or twice, that's gonna be maybe a two minute song and that's not very long to be dancing with somebody. And so they started putting in these solo sections and, and somebody would come up, maybe the trumpet player would come up and, and play a solo over the groove. And so it'd still be the same tempo, it would still be the same um, chord changes, but there would be somebody improvising over it and then the dancers could dance for longer. And that's kind of where this, this improvisation within jazz and that, that section of you play the melody, you solo, you play the melody again. It comes out of dancing. So in this setting, specifically when you're playing jazz like that, there is kind of an interplay of, of rules. Um, maybe rules is a little strong. There's suggestions for how you improvise over it. Um, and you know, these are the scales that you practice or the rhythms or sometimes, you know, the quotes, I'll, I'll, you'll play something from another song that's recognizable or something from a jingle. And those are all part of the structure um, that's, that comes in with um, improvisation in jazz. 
But within that structure and, and using that structure, the musicians are able to kind of come into this freedom because they know that they can fall back on the structure. They can kind of go outside and find that freedom and then they can come back because they know where they are. The better a musician knows this structure and can work with the structure, the more that they can express what they want, the more that they can use that freedom and play play with kind of pushing the structure a little bit because they they trust that they themselves can come back to it um, and they can they can use that structure to find more freedom. It's important to practice these structures. Uh, even as a free jazz musician, you know, there's, it's not complete freedom. You, you still have to be able to technically work your instrument. And the more you learn of technique, the more you can use, um, you know, playing the chord changes, playing in time, those sort of things, very important because then you can trust yourself when you're pushing it a little bit more. But along with practicing these structures, it's, it's also important to notice the spaces where you can improvise and, and notice how improvisation happens and how it can change the music and the moment that you're improvising in. So as you're practicing, you know, maybe phrasing your melodies, you notice how when you change it just a little bit, it totally changes how the emotions come across. Or maybe if you're practicing playing with extensions, you notice the way that you, you feel different when you're playing these different extensions and you, you have to be really conscious of that and listening in that way to notice that. Maybe if you're playing with other people, if you can do that right now, you notice how their playing affects what you can do. And conversely, you, you notice how your playing can affect them and can affect audience members. And that's the magic of improvisation is that you are able to see the moment for what it is and shape that moment. And that's the power of, of listening and improvisation and communication in music. So I hope you enjoyed that little spiel about improvisation. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments below and I'm happy to respond. Um, if you like this, give it a like, give it a share, make sure to like the uh, Wacom Arts Project um, and the Jazz Center of Bellingham and come back for some more Music Mondays. Have a great day. Stay safe.